Welcome to another uh, sketching demo that I'm going to be doing now about a great little gallery in Ajijic, Mexico. This uh, Sol Mexicana gallery is now owned by a different uh, group, but when I was down there, um, it was a fantastic place to go and gather and have art displayed. And on here, in this particular, they, she had trees outside in the courtyard. And there were angels and ornaments all over on this tree. So there's dragonflies and angels with hearts. And I think there's a hummingbird here in the corner. Here we go. There's the hummingbird. There's a butterfly on the wall. Um, and I love the orange that you see here mixed in with the blue. So I can't draw everything. Um, I have another picture. Let me just flick over to the next picture. This is the other part of the tree, but the orange isn't looking as exciting because there's the background of the door. But there's a little bit more interest in that tree. So I have just outlined a little bit of, I think it's about four by six that I'm going to draw in. What I'd like to do is take the image of the tree and I will do that in pencil first. I will just follow through some of this beautiful organic shape of the tree. I'm not sure if some of the branches... It's not interesting. It looks like those branches are intertwined. But we'll try. So I'm just trying to... Aha! Uh -huh. It's one, one branch is behind the other. I can see it now. So we got that and then this branch kind of comes up this way and I'm trying not to worry about exactly where my lines are. I'm just going to put the lines in and then we will deal with it later. So I'm putting that elbow in, bringing it down and then I'm going to bring that branch up like this. Now I've curved it up a bit rather than across so there's a little bit more movement there. I'm going to add that bit of branch up in the top there. Now, technically that draws my eye off. So how I'm going to just curve that sideways so it doesn't look like that. And then I've got to get another little branch over here and just curve that around here. And you know what? You can curve it down so we get that movement of the eye going. And we will not even continue that other part there. So we'll, we'll erase that later. And uh, now that we've got this part, we just need to quickly maybe put the branch going up like this. By the way, I'm using a mechanical pencil today with an H lead. Now I think this is actually a little bit more like that. And we'll get it down like that. Okay, so we have our tree in place that we want to use. Um, and I should take a picture of that, so bear with me for a second. And that way you will have the first tracing that I do. And simply what I do is I just use my phone and, and take a quick shot of that. And then post it. Okay, so that's done. So now well, we've got the tree. Don't worry about trying to get the, the tree accurate at this point because we're going to put we're going to put some ink in there. But let's talk about the images we want to add. Now I love up here is the dragonfly. So there's the dragonfly. A little motif right in there with the long... Okay, so we've got one dragonfly in there. And there are, if you notice, there are little tiny branches in between here that actually I missed back here that have a bit of leaf in here. I'm looking at this here. Let's open it up here. I'm looking at this here. I've just kind of drawn that. Let's put up this group here. Because although we've got the tree trunk, we should probably have a few little leaves in there. Now this is Mexico, so these leaves will be here all year. And sometimes it's the season that the trees actually then start to bloom. So they may just be, um, there may not be any leaves. 
Let's just quickly look and see if that's about as close as I can get to them. Okay. Oh, look at that one. Not that, but this. That looks interesting. So how is it hanging? It's actually hooked on. So I'm going to hook mine onto this branch here by taking that hook and putting that hook there. And then there was that nice circle around there. And then looks like there's another attachment. And then there's a string. Well, I'm just going to use one attachment. I'll just put the string there with a the little loop. And let's bring that little hummingbird up. That's great because you can see a little bit of metal. They kind of come together in a V. There's the glass body. And there's actually, you can see a little bit of the metal at the back here that kind of follows with the tail. There we go. And the little bit, you can't really see where the hook is, but you can see that it's a little ball there and there's the beak going out there. Okay, oh, there's another hummingbird right here. Terrific. So why don't we get this branch to hook around a bit and then we can hook this up. Where's the hook? She's got a long hook. Oh, it's it's a oh, it's a mobile. Oh, fantastic. Okay, well, I'm don't know that I'll be able to figure out how to make that actually. Well, we could try it. There's if we bring one down like that and maybe bring another one down here. And put that one off there. All right, so here's the hook. And there's the little string there. So now we we're going to put her right around here. A nice little circle. The metal kind of goes around a little bit. And just have fun with it. I mean, you don't have to make it perfect. Oh, there's a little bit of that. You can see the little transparency through there. And there's the head that's kind of on top. This time it's just metal head with just, I'm not sure exactly if it's just metal with a metal hole. And then the beak over there. And there's a little bit of shadow on that glass. And the tail kind of comes like that. And like that. All right, now I found the, oh, there's the other one. Oh, let's put her in front here. Okay, so she's on a string too. So let's see. Oh yeah, okay. So we'll put the hook there and then we'll bring the string down to about here and we'll get her. I'm saying her, I have no idea. It could be any species. Him, her, it's a hummingbird. A terrific artist who's working in glass and metal. And the beauty of this is you can change the color to whatever you want because it's whatever you decide that you want for the for the glass. So we now have three hummingbirds of fire dra dragonfly. And we'll let that hook kind of dangle off there. How's that? And we do have those angels. Do we need to have that many or do we want to stick to just one brand? Let's see. Let's flip over here now. There was that hummingbird there. And I think I'd like to basically put that branch there, make a hook around it. And dangle one of these down here. So you don't even see the, because it's in between the wings. So I'm just going to put that around there. And around here, so much in this picture that you could draw and play with. And then the round metal area there with the, this time it, it looks like glass is inside the face too. There's some shadow there and the big metal beak there. And this time it's just straight down like that. And I'm running out of my lead. Okay, so, oh, you know, okay, so we've got four, um, we should have odds, well, 
If we have four here, we have five now in terms of that. But I see this other dragonfly. Let's put this, let's put a big hook here. Put a hook like that. Let's hang another string off with the dragonfly going out like this. Oops, not long enough. Okay. So we got some great little pieces in there to have fun with. All right, so I am going to now take my S pen from, we'll see if the Faber-Castell is still working. Now oh, this is quite a detailed one because, yeah, it's not working. Oh, I need to change my pen. I'll have to go back to the Sharpie pen. And I'm now going to, if you can see it, just go in and just fill my, I'm not even doodling this time, I'm just going to follow the lines of my images and just pop in my lines. Oh, definitely the branch would definitely be more squiggly. It's not straight. You can break up the line of the branch too. You don't have to fill it all the way through. And I believe that one goes up like that. Comes through there. There's another one here. And that should come through somewhere like that too. We'll just let them... Oh, that was the one that I didn't finish. Well, let's hook it around that way. Just let them carry off. Okay, and then we've got to bring this one down here. Into here. Over here. Okay, so we've got our basically our branches. Now we need a few leaves that we had set up here. And uh, before I forget, I will just get my dragonfly in play here. And let's get that hooked up and strung like that. Okay, and we'll finish off filling in this area here. Finally, our last dragonfly here. Okay, we. Oh, I'll, I'll actually darken this exterior frame. And now we just want to bring the eraser in. And I think the only thing I want to add into this is maybe a couple more leaves somewhere. I'm working on Opus's paper, on their finest watercolor paper in their book. Oh, I just noticed I missed my little hook here.
Okay. Let's see if I've missed anything else. I'm using the kneaded eraser as well so that I don't have any shavings. Okay, now I'm noticing that my one branch here is missing a little kind of attachment to that branch. Why don't I just add a few leaves into here with a bit of a branch. Okay, and do I see any others? Let's bring my picture back out. Oh, let's go to the other one here. There was a few more leaves up here, bigger leaves. I kind of filled that corner up a bit more. And when I see that the, the where that branch was, there is actually a branch that comes down there, but you know what? I'll just I'll just kind of connect it. Otherwise it's gonna get too too busy. Okay. So let's paint. Um I really like I said, really like the orange, but I like the orange from there. So how will I get that? I happen to have that orange. It's a cadmium orange. And we can highlight a little bit with um, a bit darker permanent rose. There's my cadmium orange right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just with the brush kind of go around all my lovely figures. And I'll show you that, um, I mean, I could certainly leave all those beautiful figures just without any paint whatsoever. But I might just leave the tree without any paint. I'm not sure yet. I'm just adding a little bit of permanent rose to my orange to get a little darker up here because it's sh more shadowy. Now that's not dark enough. We may have to do two layers. There we go. I'm just actually putting more permanent rows in there. Trying to figure out where my branch is and where my wall is. And then the middle of the... Beautiful mobiles. Now if you notice, the wall basically, there must, there's some shadow coming from... The the rooftop or another wall across the way. I think it's another wall across the way, so I gotta watch that. All right, let's go back to just adding the orange in. some reflection in the base here from another something else that was around the side there so let's pop a little of that other color in there doesn't have to stay within the lines all right now let's get a little darker because it gets quite dark up at the top there just gonna pop a little bit more color in there Okay, I'm thinking I'm going to color the leaves, but I'm going to leave the tree trunk just the way it is. Taking a smaller brush, I'm going to take my two, if I can find it, 
I was using it yesterday. Let's see if I can... Oh, this is a one. That's probably going to be just fine. All right, I'd like to have that hummingbird, that blue there for sure. So I'm going to use my ultramarine blue. And pop some blue in there. Um, I can't remember now the firefly up here. I'm going to actually make it with blue and green. The, gray, the green will offset the red quite a bit. Because it's the complementary color, so I don't know how that's gonna that's gonna pop out very much. And I'm now just gonna put some green leaves in. Need a little bit of yellow there. It's just a bit too strong. the green back in. Maybe pop a bit more green in there. And then we can add a little bit of green. Just using sap green here. fingerprints around my book here. I should have clipped it down so it wouldn't start moving, but I didn't, so that's what's going to happen. Um, let's go back to the hummingbirds that I had actually looked at. So there's another one here that's blue. This time I'm going to use cobalt blue. And then the... I'm going to use yellow instead of the red. That's not really doing much, is it? I thought it would do more. Let's bring the red in. I'm just going to use the permanent rose over top of the yellow and see if it'll... Well, it's going to turn orange. Kind of like it's reflecting the wall. Okay, we'll leave that for now. And when was the other one? The other one was more bluish and green. Okay. So I'm just going to use... Phalo, if I can find it. I think this is ultramarine blue green shade. Let's try that. That's kind of greenish, isn't it? I'll use my cobalt turquoise. And I don't really know what the tail is, so we'll just pop in a little bit of the same color in there. There's some leaves there that I need to deal with. Well, why don't we use some of this cobalt turquoise in our dragonfly down here. Question is what to use for the other. I'm going to use blue. Okay, and we haven't dealt with that. We haven't dealt with this little guy either. What was his color? Red again. Okay, so I'm using the permanent rose here. Looks like green body, so I'm going to use cobalt turquoise. And then it looks like cobalt for the tail. Did we have? No, we couldn't really see it, so I'll just put the cobalt in here. And now that bird down here, where did that bird come from? I think from the other picture. From here, there he is. Okay, so we need some blue in here. And we've got red again. And rather than trying to paint the metal, 
we'll just leave it with the wonderful color of the pen and ink. I just noticed I missed some orange in there. there we go. Okay, so we're missing... Oh, oh, look! There's shadows on the wall. I don't know if we can make that happen. Hmm. Okay, I was just going to put in a little bit of yellow, yellow ochre actually into the tail here. Okay, now the fire... Let's go back to... Where was that other firefly that I had? Up here. Can't really see the tail, although there's nice metal there. I think I'm going to leave them. Alrighty. Um, oh yeah, we need some green into that, those leaves over there. And... I think I'd like to just highlight a little bit. I'm going to use sepia and highlight my tree a little bit here. And just by following my line along, I can just put in a little bit of dark here. helps out a little bit pop it out now we could put the reflections in there um i'm not the reflections the shadows that are hitting the wall i think rather than doing all that extra detail we've got enough detail in there already what i think i'd like to do is just pop in just a wee bit more color just in here in this corner here a bit so just a little bit of glazing over top. And a little bit more red right at the top in here. And it's interesting because I noticed that I've got that line showing a bit too much there. It should actually just be blending together. So let's take that away. Oop. Okay, there's your fun first sketch for the day. Now don't forget to put a little bit of your signature at the base. So in here I'm going to do the tree because it's dry, so I'll put my big initial S with my little M, 2021-03, today is the 13th, okay, and uh, what should we call it, mm, fun ornament tree? Okay, so there we have a little fun sketch that we did this morning. 